lists are another type of built-in sequence in Python. Lists are different from tuples in that their contents can actually change. So with a tuple, once you construct the thing, it has the contents that you gave it when it was constructed, and that contents cannot change. But lists are different. Lists are what are called mutable data values and that their contents can actually change. Um, I'll show you a demo to demonstrate several of the features of lists. And if you want to read about the details, I've given you a link to the Python documentation. So you're now reaching the stage that you should be able to read the docs directly as opposed to just, uh, for instance, the online textbook or some tutorials for beginners. You now know a lot of the programming language. So go ahead and read through the documentation that's official it does expect a lot of you, but you now know a lot, so that's fine. Okay, back to the demo. I'll start up Python. And I'll introduce lists and their features by telling you a story, the story of how playing cards got the suits that they have today. So playing cards were invented in Asia, and the original suits were the coin the string of several coins, 10, and the myriad, which was a lot of coins. And these really were just denominations. So those were the original suits. But what happened? Well, this idea of playing cards was a really good one, so it was imported to Europe, but they changed the suits along the way. So suits is currently a list of coin, string, myriad, so the pop method on the list returns the last element of the list and removes it. So now if I look at suits, I find that it no longer has that suit in it. It has changed. This is something new. Tuples never changed, but lists do. I can also remove things with the remove method, which takes a value and removes that value. So what's left in suits? The coin. So, uh, playing cards made their way from Asia to Spain, where the coin suit was augmented with three other suits. So the append method of a list will insert one additional element at the end. So the Spaniards in introduced a new suit, the cup. So now suits has coin and cup. And then two other suits were added. And we can add multiple different values to a list using the extend method. So append takes a single value, extend takes a sequence, uh, and adds all of those elements of the sequence to suits, the list on which the method was invoked. So we add sword and club. And you see the suits of the modern Spanish deck, the coin, the cup, the sword, and the club. As these playing cards were passed around Europe, changes were made further still. Uh, so I'll show you that you can assign to a particular index in a list using the following notation. So this appears to be element selection, except for that since it's on the left side of an equal sign in an assignment statement, what we're really doing is we're assigning to a particular position in the list. So Italians called swords espadas, which eventually became the spade that we know today in the American deck. And the American deck is really just based on the French deck. So currently our suits are coin, cup, spade, and club. Well, we keep the spade and the club, but the French decided to change the coin in the cup for heart and diamond. So let's look at this assignment statement. This actually assigns to a slice of the list. So this is elements starting at zero inclusive through two exclusive. So elements zero and one are going to be replaced with heart and diamond. So if we look at suits now, 
Spade and club are still there, and heart and diamond have replaced coin and cup, giving us the modern French and American decks. So now we've seen several of the methods and specialized syntax that exist for mutating lists. We have pop, remove, append, extend, and then two forms of assignment statements that are different than usual assignment. Instead of binding new names to values, they're actually changing the contents of existing lists. We can also create new lists using a syntax called the list comprehension. I'll show you a couple of examples. I can write the uppercase suit for every suit in suits, and that will give me a new list where each element is found by evaluating that expression, with suit bound to a different element of the original list. And this is called a list comprehension. It creates a new list based on an existing sequence. There's even an extended format that takes an existing sequence and only uses some of its elements. So um, we could look at the suit, but only letters one through four for suit in suits if the length of the suit is five. And that uh, considers only heart and spade, the two length five words, and is taking the letters within them, ear and pet. So you may have noticed something else. We're treating strings here as sequences, selecting some of their letters, and computing their length. Strings are a sort of sequence in Python as well, and we'll look at them in more detail in the next lecture. So we just saw a new form of expression called the list comprehension, which has two forms. The fully general form has a map expression and name, an iterable expression and a filter expression. And then we saw a short version, which left out the if and then the filter expression. So these are combined expressions that evaluate the lists. And they have the following evaluation procedure. They actually introduce a new frame, extending the current frame of the environment. So that means that the names used here will only exist as a part of evaluating the list comprehension. Those names won't be available after the list comprehension has been evaluated. So we create an empty result list that is the value of this expression. And then for each element in the iterable value of iter expression, so we evaluate that iter expression and get an iterable value, and we walk through each element we bind the name to that element in the new frame that we just created in step one. And if filter expression is evaluated to a true value, then we add the value of map expression to the result list. So this is meant to be a syntax that's fairly easy to understand once you get used to it. You figure out what you're iterating over, you check if some condition is true for each element, and then you transform that element with the map expression perhaps into something else. For instance, we took a subset of the letters or we computed an uppercase version. The purpose of these list comprehensions is to make it easy to process sequences in Python. Filtering the contents of a sequence or applying some function to a sequence to transform each element in some way are very common sequence operations. We'll look at those things in more detail in the next lecture.